Welcome back again. So in this lecture, I will be discussing a, a sample project integration test that we have actually installed, downloaded and installed in the last lecture in ASP.NET Core 3.1 and here are the learning outcomes. So how the system under test or SUT that we in introduced in the first lecture is organized and uh, we will test the application prerequisites and analyze the integration test in basic test class with default web application factory and learn about the theory and inline data attributes in the X unit framework through the basic test class. Okay, so let's first switch over to Visual Studio. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to this application system under test by running this uh, the application by clicking the IIS Express icon. Now, by the time the application load, let me tell you this, uh, the index page of the application are pages slash index dot CSHTML and the pages slash index dot CSHTML CSHTML dot CS class provides a UI and a page model methods to control the addition, deletion and analysis of messages. Okay, average words per message, which we'll soon see. Now the application message app has come and is in front of us. So you can see the links on top. This is the razor page at this port number. So this port number will differ from computer to computer. You will have a different port number on your machines. So home GitHub profile about. So this is the home page. So there are already three messages which has been um, the, the this has been seeded with three messages through the in memory um, database and you can delete these messages. You can clear all all of these messages and you can add a message. Say let's say hello. Hello there, welcome to my message app. And if you add this message, if you click the add message, it will be added over there. Okay, and if you wish to analyze, so what it will do, the average message length is seven words. Now, if you put another message, hello world, this message will also be there in the messages collection. And if you analyze the message again, then the average message will be four and a half. 4.5 words. So it will give you the total number of words divided by the total number of messages, average message length it will um, find out for you. Now let me close the application and then inspect the um, this solution closely. Now this message is described by the message class which is under data and uh, this is the message class. So this has got a public property ID and this um, text, a public string type text and which has got a required attribute and this will be data type dot text and the error message is string length can be 200. There is a 200 character limit of the messages. Please shorten your message if it is exceeding 200 characters. Okay, so messages are stored using entity frameworks in memory database. Now, the, this app also contains a data access layer in its database context class, which is app db context. So this is the data access layer of this application. There are a few snippets. Okay. So other things are the database is empty on an, when the app starts up, the database is empty in memory database. The message store is initialized with three messages. Okay. Now you can see these three messages come from this utilities uh, helper class within the test project. This is a page project dot test. This is the test project, which is a X unit framework. And uh, you know this uh, public static, this static uh, method, which returns a list of message, get seeding message. So it returns a new list of messages containing these three messages. Okay, to start with. And the app also includes a secure page that can only be accessed by an authenticated user. So where is the secure page? This is the secure page. 
secure page within the main application SUT or system under test. It has got only one, uh, this, is, this is derived from the page model class, secure page model, and it has got a page handler on gate. So this can be accessed by authenticated user. So I have again run the application and if you look into secure page, which requires authentication, you come up with this uh, email and password link. And uh, if you have already registered as a new user, you can log in with this uh, email and password again. Okay. So if you click on login, let's see what comes up. Now, somehow I lost, I forgot my password and the forgot password link is not working, but that is beyond uh, uh, today's lecture scope. So I don't worry. So I have registered with another new email ID and I've been able to log in. So now I can log out and I'm able to again log in. So now let's get back to the basic test. Now, as you see that there are two main projects, two projects rather than uh, just two projects. So this is the system under test, Razor Pages project, and this is the test project. This is the project which is testing this Razor Pages project for integration test. Now let's go through the uh, slideshow. And learn about the test project must reference. So there are few references that the project file should have. These are the new packages. It should reference this Microsoft.ASP.NET code.mbc.testing package and specify the web SDK in the project file. Okay, and this sample app also references xunit, xunit.runner.visualstudio and AngularSharp, which is a uh, HTML DOM parser. Okay, so let's see these in the project file. So by double clicking this uh, Razor Projects.test project, I could open the project file and you can see all that I have told you right now in that slideshow, these project references have been included. Okay. So Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Diagnostic.Entity Framework Core. There are so many Entity Framework Core dependencies and one, two, three, four, five, and then it should map to this Microsoft.ASP.NET net.sdk.web, this project SDK. Now coming to the point of this basic test, let's just open this test. So today we'll be keeping restricting ourselves to just analyzing this test. This is an integration test. So that's a part of this integration test folder, which has got many tests, auth test.cs, basic test and index page test. So in today's lecture, we'll be just to avoid the video going uh, to a very um, long duration, we will restrict ourselves to testing this, you know, analyzing this test only. So I will just uh, uh, right click and close all but this. So closing all the other documents. All right. And here you can see, as I had promised that I'll be talking about uh, web application factory. So this web application factory class it's a factory for bootstrapping an application in memory for functional end-to-end -end tests so if you right click i will show you the definition uh, and it has got by right click and go to definition you can see the metadata that is generated by the dotnet core framework and this class it is actually uh, it takes a t entry point and this T entry point is used to create a, this uh, whole class with the T entry point is used to create a test server, test server object for the integration test. This is the test server. Okay. And this is deriving from the, this is implementing the I disposable and where T entry point is any class. All right. And this T entry point is usually the startup class. Okay, and then right click and see the test server class definition. Let's go to the definition of this test server class as well. So this is actually derived, this 
implements two interfaces i server and i disposable and it has got a method public method which returns an http client create client okay and it has got these several properties base address host and services and features and etc now this basic test class it implements a i class fixture interface within web application factory um, and it takes the startup class as an object and this class it indicates this i class fixture to indicate that the class contains tests and provide shared object instances across the tests in the class now in this test class this method checks okay this get endpoints return success and correct content type which takes a string url it checks the response status code is successful or the status codes are in the range of 200 to 299 and the content type header is either text slash html or character set with a character set of utf okay utf8 so this is actually simple to understand right so arrange in it's creating a client instance by calling that factory dot create client method which we have just shown you and this factory instance is a web application factory and on the app side a response is created response object which actually um, calls the get async method and passing the url which is passed as an argument and it gets the response and then response dot ensure success status code okay and then asset dot equal this is and the expected result is so as you can see that expected string is this entire string this part and uh, um, your actual is response this response object dot content dot headers dot content type dot to string okay so now what do these theory and inline data means all right so this test class is this so far we have seen a fact in the previous unit test or previous you know some other test where you are not passing any parameter to the test class to the te test method okay here you are passing parameters like url okay which is of type string so in order this theory attribute says that you know it is actually marks a test method you can see marks a test method as being data theory okay so this is actually and this actually uh, allows you to pass some data like you know this inline data front slash this is the index or home page this is again the index is the about so this is by making at decorating it with the attribute inline data you are actually passing the url object url string through this inline data all right now before finishing let's run this test on the test explorer so click on test and click on this test explorer which brings the test explorer window and there are lots of tests i will just run this particular test so basic test this one okay this one basic test get endpoint return success and content type actually this, these are five tests because they have got five data okay so let's run this test again and then click on run it's running the test previously it is all passed you have seen but i'm running it in front of you so it in the process it builds also so build succeeded it's still running now it is now the, all of these tests are passed so great so we have seen the integration tests have actually passed so that's the end of it so in today's lecture we have covered all of this we have seen how the 
system under test is organized and we have seen the test application prerequisites and analyze the integration test in the basic test class with default web application factory and learnt about finally learnt about the theory and inline data attributes in the XUnit framework.